So, um, is patent law a good career? Uh, the answer is blank yeah, <laughs> blank yeah. So uh, I've already gone over my background a million times. I was a pat I passed my patent bar exam at 21. I have been basically my whole family does patents uh, from my sister to my dad to my mom. Uh, we, we are just a patent first family. And uh, you know, when I went to law school, I went to William Mary Law School, which is a top 25 law school right now. And I w went there as already as a patent agent. I already passed my patent bar exam before going to law school. And that gave me a lot of opportunities because uh, a lot of the older students were asking me, oh, hey, I'm interested in taking the patent bar exam. Can you give me an outline? Can you give me help? And once I became a little older, then the younger students were asking me that. So I am well connected to everyone in Will & Mary uh, that was two, uh, grades above me and the grades below me because they want, you know, I know who they are because I helped them with their patent bar exam. Or at the very least, they've asked for a study guide. Or, you know, I was the president of the IP society in William Mary Law on my 2L year. So even that activity, you know, doing activities together, it would, you would see everyone who's interested in patent law. Those people have gone on and been very successful in life. Um, I mean, we're, we still keep in touch and everyone I know on my dad's side. So again, my dad's a patent attorney or he was, now he does most of the contracts. I mean, he never, it's when, once you pass the patent bar exam, it's like your driver's license, like it's there forever. You're fine. Unless you like, you do something really bad and then you were out to retest, right? Um, so patent is a very, very great a job. It's just one of the best jobs you can ask for. And that's why, you know, I am considering going back and opening my own patent law firm in New York City right now because there is a high demand for it uh, and there is a lot of money in it. But it is, um, the way that it's structured is you might have one big client, like Paramount Pictures, and then you might have a bunch of little inventors. All you need is that one whale client because that person can give you work for years, for decades. Um, in terms of PCTs, which is what I specialize in. PCTs to China, actually. Um, so it's not like one inventor invents one thing and now they want the inventors coming to you. That's very unlikely. It's more likely a business with many inventions that, is keep, that keeps pumping out inventions. It might be coming to you and saying, hey, we want you on retainer and this is the amount of work that we're expecting every month. So that is your gold mine, right? That's your, uh, what do they call it? That's your golden goose. And then everything else is gravy on top of your eggs. It's a great career. It's a fantastic career. And I did it when I was very young and I don't think I had the appreciation for it. I do today. Um, so when I did it, when I did it, I was doing patents when I was in sixth grade. Uh, and then seventh grade, eighth grade, because my dad was going to night school to become a lawyer, uh, become a patent attorney at the time. So obviously, you know, that was a big part of our lives during that time that he went to night school. And I think I was not like pushed into it, but it was always assumed that that's what I would do. So when I went to NYU, I took one of the majors that would let me be a patent agent. Um, I became a patent agent when I was 21 and I worked at the largest law firm from 18 to 24, uh, the largest Chinese IP law firm in globally, right? So it's a pretty big law firm. And in terms of like PCTs, yeah, that's them. That's them. There's only like one, right? So um, I had a blast and I never like, I had a great corner office in the one Penn Plaza outside Madison Square Garden. I had great food. Um, I never worried about money, um, and I thought it, it was like too, I don't wanna say it was like too easy, but it was like too pathed. So I have this tendency that like, if things just seem really easy, I will make it difficult for whatever reason I have. Like if things are going like, wow, this is a straight line to the goal to become like really wealthy. I'm gonna be like, nah, I'm gonna take the side road and see where it leads me on the adventure, right? So it's the adventure I want to be part of, not the goal, right? Not the end goal. Had I stayed as a patent agent, um, would I make, or a patent attorney, would I make more money than I? So for the first few years, I absolutely would have made 10 times, 20 times what I, ma I made in the first few years, which is like almost nothing. But now I'm at a place where I make about the same as a patent attorney, uh, maybe a little bit more than some, maybe a little less than others. 
but it's relatively the same. I still think patterns roar better uh, because long term wise, you know, patterns always have. So here's here's a great the beauty of um, like COVID nineteen. Let's say COVID nineteen, a vaccine comes out. Do you know how many patterns will be on this vaccine? I mean, it's going to be one of the most protected patterns in history. Now, when you talk about polio patent, the guy who invented it actually released it to the public. Same with peanut butter and same with all these great inventions that we have. Um, COVID-19 is not going to be like that. COVID-19 is going to be a, a pharmaceutical company eventually gets a vaccine. They patent it all and they sell it to the U.S. government for trillions of dollars, right? And they sell it to individuals for trillions of dollars. Uh, that patent is worth a lot of money. There has to be some patent attorney associated with that patent or maybe a whole team of them. There will always be a need for patents um, or I guess not a need because honestly, they should just like the polio guy, just give it to the public for free. They should, there's always going to be a desire to make money from patents. I never, like when Nokia went belly up, there was this great war to acquire Nokia's patent, Nokia's patents, because then if I, Apple got it, they could sue Samsung. If Samsung got it, it they could sue Apple. So when you talk about patents, the value to investors, for instance, uh, I remember you know, I was asking my um, senior uh, lawyer, hey, like, why is Paramount Picture like spending all this money to do this? It doesn't make, really make sense. Like, I don't, is it, are these movies even popular anymore? And the, the answer I got back was they're doing it probably for investment reasons where they can now tell, hey, investors or people who invested in our company, we now have 2,000 trademarks in China. And everyone be like, 2,000, wow, that's, that's really, nope, no, we got 20,000, wow, 20,000. And the stock price goes up, right? So it is a very interesting game that is being played right now in China, especially. Because like if you if you were a company and you went, went to Shark Tank and you said, hmm, I have 5,000 patents in China. The Shark Tank people would just stand up and clap their hands. Wow, amazing. And then you say patent pending. And then they would still clap their hands because they don't know what it means. Patent pending. You know, it means you applied for it. Not that you got it or even will get it. So patent law, I mean, it is a beautiful career. If you want to make money, if you want to be in a, a very stable job, if you want to start a family, that's, I mean, that's a route that like, obviously like everyone is telling me I should have took. And now I realize that as much as I love marketing, as much as I love my employees, um, sometimes in life, you just take the simplest route. Like why go off and, you know, the side and the adventure is a lot of fun but maybe sometimes it's time to return from the adventure and go back to the main road and make a bunch of money, right? Like, who knows? So Patton, a very, very, very stable job, very high paying. And honestly, like it would be difficult for me not to imagine uh, a really like a, an okay, like an average patent attorney not being employed even during COVID-19. Cause you know, think about the, the valuation of these companies that are finding the vaccine. All of these companies need to have patent attorneys. All these companies need to have the patent law firm. Sometimes they probably have in, in-house, but then I'm sure they outsource it as well. And I'm sure they're actively billing hours against the potential vaccine that might be happening right now. So that's what's happening. Like in any time in pharmaceuticals, right? When there's a new drug, guess what happens to it? It gets patented. So for every new drug, it gets patented. For every new invention, it gets patented. For every new thing, it gets patented. Um, because people want to make money from it. Um, it's not like the good old days where you patent stuff because you wanted people to know about it. And you didn't weren't, you know, thinking, oh, polio vaccine, I should make a trillion dollars from this. No, you're thinking, oh, well, I really want to uh, eradicate polio. Unfortunately, that is not what's going to happen to the COVID-19. Uh, I already know what law firms are involved and what internal lawyers are involved because they're very vocal about it in the community. Anyway, hi guys. <laughs>